All right, Tarka Dal. Right, Tarka Dal. This is uh, one for the vegan and vegetarian community out there, as well as people who love delicious uh, comfort food. Uh, it's not terribly spicy, but I, I like to spice mine up as well. Um, but we'll do this as the, the, the not too spicy version. Um, what I've got is I've got uh, about eight ounces, half a pound, 250 grams of Tor Dal. That's T O O R Dal. I don't know if you can read that. Tor Dal. Okay, there's a couple of different types. You get the oily one and uh, you get this one that's dry. You can also use yellow split peas, which is um, the same sort of thing. Um, it both both produce equally delicious dal. Okay, um, I've got some turmeric, or as it's known in the Caribbean, uh, saffron. Um, I've got some cumin seeds, and I've got some panch puran. Uh, panch puran is a is a mix of spices. You should be able to get it from just about any Indian grocers, um, and it's it's generally uh, spices that are added to sweeten the oil. Uh, when you make things, and we use that for the tarka. Tarka is a method by which you would cook the dal separately, and then you would add the uh, the flavourings to it in the form of a sweetened oil. So you sweeten the oil with, with, for instance, onions, garlic, in my case a little bit of tomato, and some herbs and spices. Um, and and that is then added to the dal once it's cooked, but we'll show you that in a minute. Um, the tarka is often called, is elsewhere it's called chonky or chunky. Uh, and it's the same process really. It's, it's this idea of adding a sweetened oil, um, adding the flavouring compounds to, to something after it's cooked. So there we go. Um, that's... Um, that's cassia bark, and that's I, I also add a couple of little bit inch pieces of that to my uh, tarka because it's a nice sweet cinnamony flavoured spice. Uh, I've got half an onion. I've got around about four cloves of garlic. You need plenty of garlic for this one; gives it m most of the flavour. And unusually, it's not traditional, but I like to add a little bit of tomato, either half a tomato or a small ripe tomato like that one. Uh, and that's what makes it up. The first thing we have to do now, of course, is uh, we have to wash. We have to wash our dal. And the way we, I would do this, first of all, uh, I would go in there and search through it. Pick, just pick out any bits that don't look right. Just go through it. Sift it. This is a really good, high quality, um, high quality. Producer, I think they're called TRS. I think something. TRS wholesale, yeah. So TRS, um, that's a really good one. I, I, I searched through it. I don't find any stones, anything that. It's a really good quality one. I suspect when I wash it, it won't be very dirty either. So um, I'm going to wash it. Plenty of water and get in there with your hands. And what I do, because I'm lazy, I get in there and do it again. Get some more water on it. Uh, when I'm rinsing, I use tap water, but when I, when I um, when I cook, I will only use filtered water or, or water to make my tea and coffee with. I only ever use filtered water, so I know what I'm doing. But this is gets tipped away and my filter water is too precious to wash stuff in so there we go so keep rinsing it and then eventually your rinse water will turn rather clear normally about three times there you go it gets less milky and cloudy each time you do it but you won't get rid of the cloudiness completely so don't don't be too obsessive about it all right and make sure you collect it all because it's important so 
So I'll leave that in the net because that'll be easier then to tip straight into the um, saucepan and put it in the saucepan. Get it all in there, waste not, want not. As my granny always used to say, waste not, want not. That's the wise old lady. She died in 1974 and I remember it every day of my life. That's what kind of a lady she was. There you go. She had lots of great sayings. One of them was, I'm too poor to buy cheap stuff. How's that? It's brilliant, isn't it? Too poor to buy cheap stuff. Damn right. So what I've done is I've covered it. Uh, the, there's not a lot of dal in it because I'm only cooking for my brother and myself. Um, but what I've done is I've done it, if I put my finger in it, it's up to the top of my thumbnail, all right? Um, it doesn't really matter because you can just add more and more uh, water to it as you go. So I'm now going to transfer that to the heat and then let's get that going. And we'll bring that up to the boil and I'll show you that technique very soon. All right, it's come to the boil. I've turned it down to half heat. And what we've got here now is you see that this, this scum starting to um, form on the surface. What I do now is I start to skim that off because that's undesirable. You don't want that. We don't want to eat that, boys and girls, gastronauts. So let that, just do that a couple of times. And uh, as, as the dal boils down, you, you might need to add a little more water. What I do is I boil a kettle. So I'm adding hot water to it, uh, rather than having to wait for cold water to heat up every time. So just every, every couple of minutes you'll find that scum builds up on the surface. And the best way, uh, I, I use this little tea strainer to uh, scoop it off. And you see that's rather effective. It, it, uh, occasionally you'll pick out the odd piece of dull with it, but don't worry about that. Alright. And then we just carry on that boiling process now until the dal's cooked. So continue to skim and boil. And once the dal's cooked, I'll get back to you. All right, um, I've done the final skim on the dal. That's uh, now simmering away nicely. Uh, I, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about turmeric. Um, turmeric is, is, is often uh, called saffron, especially in the Caribbean. Uh, and it is used to colour rice, it's used to, uh, it's, it's the yellowing compound that you find in curry powder and it's, it's an extremely um, wonderful uh, spice. Um, turmeric is a dried and ground tuber uh, in the same family as ginger, in the same family as galangal and in the same family as ginseng. It's all the same sort of um, thing. Uh, but it has this beautiful bright yellow colour and one of its major properties is that it's an antidepressant um, so don't be shy of using it. It doesn't have a particularly wonderful flavour uh, but it also has a, a preservative element about it as well. I'm not sure exactly how that works but um, it is known to be a, a pretty good as a preservative. Uh, I like to add a good half teaspoon of that to my dal. Um, about that much uh, to my dal as it boils and there is one other thing which I need to come grab from my cupboard and which I need to tell you about but we'll put that in and we'll stir it and then let that cook for another minute while I get my other thing out we'll show you that all right what we're going to talk about now is asafetida or hing um, Asafetida is a smelly resin. It's a resin that is extruded from some, I forget which, um, which plant, but I don't think it would make any sense anyway. And it, it is used extensively in Indian cookery. And uh, it is considered in some cultures to be one of the pungent uh, spices that we don't like. 
in in some in some uh, religions they don't like it a bit like garlic and a bit like onion um, but what I like to do is I like to use a little pinch of hing or asafedita I think hing is the Hindi name for it um, I like to add a pinch of that it has two effects it's a great flavoring compound um, some uh, some Indians use it instead of garlic but um, I particularly like it as a flavouring compound. If you eat Bombay mix, it's one of the flavours that you'll definitely get in Bombay mix. Uh, and it also reduces the flatulent element that you get from some pulses. So, uh, Hing is a wonderful, wonderful additive um, to Indian foods. There you go. Uh, it's sometimes sold as a powder in a little pot. Uh, and it's sometimes sold in this granular form. I, I actually like this granular form. A, it keeps a lot longer, uh, and B, it's it's if if you're adding it to things like beans that you're going to boil for any amount of time, it, it boils down anyway. It's rather uh, rather effective. I I love I really do love thing. It's uh, it's something I discovered uh, many years ago, and I, I, I it's one of my things that I generally keep in my stock cupboard. Okay, that's uh, boiling down as you'll see. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it now. Let me reach across there. I'm going to add boiled water to it. And I'm just going to raise it just a bit, a bit more. Let that boil down a bit longer until it's cooked. All right, let's check that. That's still cooking away. It's not quite done yet. Let me just test it. There's no hard, fast rule for how long to cook this, and I'll tell you for why. You've no way of telling the moisture content of dal in the packet, you know, it, it, or how long it's been stored depends on how much moisture it's got left in it. Very little, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to store it for so long. But um, you, you can't. I can't say you've got to boil it for 20 minutes because you, sometimes you, can, you have to boil it for 40 minutes and some you have to boil it for 15 minutes so you, you, can, you can only tell by tasting it. And that's still quite nutty so that needs to uh, cook out a little bit longer. Uh, one thing that will speed up the cookery process is not to put salt in at, at this stage. You don't salt it until the end. We're not flavouring it till the end. We just cook it blandly in water and turmeric until uh, it's soft, until it, 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 it goes mushy like porridge and then, then we do all the flavouring, so all the salt in uh, and, and all the, the, the tarka process uh, will, will go on once it's cooked. Alright, that's cooking down quite a bit, let's have a look. Give that a stir, it's starting to thicken up nicely now. Let's just take those out, let cool down a sec, and then I give it a pinch. I actually give it a taste, but that's breaking up nicely, so that's perfect. Now it's cooked down, we can go on to looking at making the taco. I'll just let that continue to cook. All right, I've chopped up all the vegetables, I've chopped up the onion rather fine, the garlic fine, and I've chopped up the tomato. We don't add the tomato until the very end. And I'm gonna take a pinch, say half a teaspoon of cumin, and add that to my panch pan mix. So there's about a whole teaspoon in total of, of spices. And the next thing we do is we need to get the oil hot so you want to use a decent quality eating oil, um, something something uh, that's uh, light uh, but able to carry the flavours. I use um, sunflower oil, which I particularly like. Okay, get your pan nice and hot, and then into that you want about two tablespoons of oil, your favourite oil. Bring the oil up to heat. So once the oil's up to heat, in go your spices, and we stir that around. And then we let that go for a minute and let them sizzle and pop. 
Okay, once that's up to heat, everything happens rather quick from here. So what we do is we get in the garlic. That sweetens the fat to start with. Decent strike heat there, but. And then the onion, that all goes in. And then we let that fry down for a bit. Get all that in. And then we fry that down until it gets to the caramelization stage. So we just fry that down, let that fry down. Meanwhile, um, let's just taste the dal. See how that's going. Keep it stirring to keep it off the bottom of the pan. And let's have another taste. Now, I know at least one of my friends uh, watching this, uh, Taste of Trini, likes to have us rather, um, rather, rather runny. Uh, I'm sort of halfway down the other camp. Uh, some people like it thick, uh, like a really thick porridge. I like it about the halfway mark, and that's kind of how I like it. I find it easier to, to eat with my roti or, or, or with rice that way. It's just the way I prefer it. But each to their own. You, you make it as runny or as solid as you like. It's up to you. Um, at this stage, because it's cooked now, I can think about adding a bit of salt to it. So I'm going to add uh, just under a teaspoon of salt. Stir that in and see what that's like. Make sure you taste as you go. You don't know how it tastes till you taste it, yeah. Do that's just right. Uh, once you start adding the salt, the flavour of the turmeric, the, the flavour of the hing, uh, and the beautiful inherent flavour of the lentils suddenly comes out and, and, and then you start to, to realise just from, su from something that seems like very plain ingredients, something amazing starts to happen. Dal is one of the world's greatest comfort foods. Um, it's vegan, vegetarian uh, and it is just literally fantastic food to eat. It's so good for you. Um, and the best of all is it's cheap as chips. I'll keep that going until the uh, onion uh, has, has begun to caramelise and soften and I'll get back to you. Okay, my tart is coming up to colour and I can now smell that characteristic sweet smell as the onions start to caramelise and you want to lift that off before um, before the onions and before the garlic have a chance to burn and then the next thing we do is simply this we pour everything into the dal and then we give it a good old stir turn the heat off there now it's not needed rather than waste that flavour we get it in there and get it into the pan where it belongs because where flavour belongs is in your belly and on your palate and the very last thing that goes in there is that tomato and just chuck that in and give that a stir and then I get the best part and the only way you're going to get this best part is by making this yourself so make sure you do it lift that up Mm. Oh, that is <laughs> that is wonderful. Um, serving. Always make it slightly more loose than you actually want to eat, because as this cools down, it will thicken, um, and the longer it cools down, the more it will thicken. So, uh, if if you want it. I like it fairly thick, but I still have it quite runny in the pot. All right, that's now ready to go. Can take the heat off it completely, and that will continue to thicken the more it cools. Okay, to serve it, um, I like to serve it uh, with a, a paratha bread, uh, or serve it with your favourite roti. I, I actually like it with chapatis. I like it with paratha bread, and I particularly like it with aloo paratha. That's uh, a paratha bread stuffed with uh, a spicy potato mix, which is really nice. Or muli paratha, which is uh, 
um, a parata that is stuffed with um, a spicy mix of giant radish, um, which is wonderful again. Or just serve it with uh, basmati rice, uh, however you prefer it. It's your dal, you serve it how you like. And I particularly love dal anywhere between piping hot and, and cold. I just think it's amazing. I love it. I love dal. So here's one for the vegetarians and the vegans. Taka dal. Enjoy.